You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. As if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale: Jesse's Path. So, the last place we left off, we adopted adorable Corgi, which uh, Marion named Toast, and now Jesse is teaching him how to herd cattle. So. Quite adorable. But anyway, guys, hope you're doing well. Sit back and enjoy the video, and let's jump right into it. Alright, here we go. <clears throat> Alright. You deserve it, Marion. Hopefully it'll be one nice thing to think about at the end of the day. Malcolm could even build him a pen if you like. Hey, pardon? Couldn't you, Malcolm? Oh no, he'll be sleeping in bed right next to me, won't you, fella? What's all this commotion? Grace, we have a dog. Oh, wow. Jesse, you told her? <laughs> no, not that. Jesse's eyes get huge. <laughs> no, no, Grace. Um, we, uh... Look! Marion presents toast and Grace scrunches her nose. Wait. A real dog? What other kind of dog is there, silly? Well... Grace! What? Let's focus on the dog at hand, shall we? Of course, Malcolm. I don't see any other dogs here. <laughs> well, I've enjoyed our time together. It's getting to be high time to beat a hasty retreat, thanks to, Gra thanks to Grace. Malcolm. Malcolm and I should get going. I need to uh, help him uh, feed the horse. Jesse must be reading my mind. Wait, that's not something werewolves can do, is it? I need to read birds again. I won't keep you two. I hear that feeding Hazel is a lengthy endeavor. Knowing Jessie, it'll take her all night to make sure she's satisfied. Grace! The horse! It takes a lot to please her. That's all I meant. Hey! Down, girl! Oh, God. Jessie lunges at Grace and tears off chasing after her sister down the road. I didn't think anyone could match Jessie in a race, but apparently fleet feet run in the family. And again, Jessie is holding back, using only two of her feet. I shrug helplessly to Marion, who returns the gesture as if to say, You see what I deal with every day. Go on. You'd best catch her before she's run halfway to Strathcurran. Alright. Be seeing you and take good care of your new ma of your new mama, Toast. I doff my cap and run down the road to catch my runaway girl. <laughs> so cute. It's all so adorable! Oh god. I'm eventually able to talk Jesse into leaving Grace B and hustling along back to my house. That is, once I catch up to them. The chase had gone a few furlongs down the road until Jesse dropped to four legs and finally caught her little sister. I found Jesse the wolf sitting atop Grace, pinning her to the ground, her honor upheld. Now Jesse sits across from me, having to shed her human trappings once again. Are you going to keep doing that? If I can, sure. It feels natural, like changing out of your clothes. It's no big deal. It's kind of a big deal. Agnes is storing louder than a locomotive. We're safe. I have to agree. Despite the sun still being visible on the horizon, Gran was sound, sound asleep when we arrived. I'm relieved and pleased to have the alone time with Jesse. I'm just impressed by your confidence. Gee, thanks. I'm impressed by your patience dealing with my sisters. And that yappy dog. Wait. You are toast. Oh, stop. Speaking of toast, I'm going to get myself a snack. I sincerely hope she's referring to the brown bread and not the morsel-sized puppy. She may look the part of a predator, but she wouldn't hurt a fly, right? You know, I think I've seen Marion. I haven't think of blah. You know, I don't think I've seen Marion that pleased in many years. Getting the pup was a wonderful gesture, Jesse. Truly thoughtful. Everyone deserves a faithful and loving companion. Jessie comes over from the cabinets and nuzzles herself into me. I hold tightly to her, so thankful for her love. She then proceeds to rifle through some paper wrappings and starts gnawing on a piece of beef. Jessie! Grant just went to the butcher! That was for our dinner! She looks at me and shrugs, then speaks with her mouth full. I'm hungry! <laughs> it's not even cooked! Hey, a lot of people like their meat rare. I put my fingers to my temples and close my eyes. What have I gotten myself into? 
I've asked myself that so many times I've lost track. You wouldn't love me without all my quirks, Mr. Campbell. <laughs> Is that so? It's factual, yes. Oh, let me pause right here, guys. An unabashed manner brings up the conversation I had with Marion earlier. Marion reminded me of the time you knocked out the McAllister lad at school. <laughs> oh, really? That was too funny. What a time! God, she's so cute! As he takes a seat at my feet and rests her head on my legs. Those were the days, eh? He had it coming, you know. No one messes with my sister and gets away with it. I think back to those times and it's such a hodgepodge of memories. It's hard to say what was real and what I've now just imagined. Do you remember Grace bringing handfuls of shells to the church and setting them down in the pews? I'd never heard women scream louder. Your grandfather laughed for months after that. <laughs> that was Grace's handiwork. Of course. Who else? I remember the incident. I remember the incident quite well. The terror on my mother's face was quite a sight to behold. Grace couldn't have been older than five or six, too young to hang around with us, and even then she kept it herself. I racked my brain for other memories of the youngest MacLeod. At the time, we had to rescue Grace. Missy's eyes grow wide, as if replaying the scene. Oh, Malcolm, you don't even know. Marion still won't fill the bathtub to the top. Why did Grace think she could swim the entire lock? Heaven knows. She was so small. If you and I hadn't jumped into the water with Marion, she'd have floated away half halfway to China the overnight. <laughs> that scamp. Always has been. Always will be. Oh! Her face breaks into a different smile, perhaps a bit more sinister. I also have very distinct memories of stealing father's whiskey and taking it to the shore. Was I there for that? I don't recall it, and it's something I definitely would. Dizzy's face drops. Oh, I guess you'd left town by then. I don't know if she's about to drop the subject or continue. Just... Know that for every good time we all had while you were gone, there were many more that weren't as tolerable. I understand. Truth be told, I drank back then to silence a lot of voices inside me, ones telling me I'd never experience. Her voice cracks and she holds tighter to my leg. Experience all that I have now. I expect tears, but none fall. She gathers herself and stands. There's so much I want to say in return, so much I want to share. All the while, I try to ignore the small patch of hair that has gathered on the rug. She, unfortunately, does spot it. Ah! Oh, I keep shedding! It's so embarrassing! I'm sorry! Let me grab a broom. No need. I can take care of it. Cleaning up after your pet? <laughs> Just make sure you don't start marking your territory. Oh, I'll mark any territory I want. As soon as I feel her hands on me, I am a lost cause. How about it, soldier? Are all your men in rank? My dear, I am entirely at your command. Excellent. Now how about a taste of that meat? Oh! <laughs> oh dear. No, uh, let me save it right here before it gets too saucy. I'm st I am playing on safe for work mode, so... As he starts to slide her hand down the front of my shirt, stopping at the top button of my pants. My body heats through, and I grasp her shoulders. We're caught off guard by a very soft voice. I knew it! Jesse and I both gasp. Afraid Graham, afraid Grand might scream or faint, but nothing of the sort happens. All three of us stand there in the very awkward silence as we all listen to Jesse pant. I expect her to change back to her human form, but it does not happen. Jesse, is that really you? Yes. I'm a werewolf, Agnes. No, no, you're not. The grandmother shakes her head, but it doesn't appear to be but it doesn't appear to be disbelief. You're more than that. Grand takes a step towards Jesse, who hangs her head in submission. Grand pets her head gently and looks ready to cry. I knew there was something off about you, you marvelous creature, you. Malcolm, are you looking at this? A wolf! Jesse! Gran has a sparkle in her eye, and a giddiness through her tone that belies her age. I'm frozen in shock. It's the last reaction I would have expected. Never at my age did I ever think I would live to see magic come to life here. It's a dream come true. Malcolm, 
Don't just stand there. Put some tea on for our guest. I want the whole story. All of it. Oh, Grand, you really interrupted quite of, uh, at the beginning of something there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Maggie Tit's good... Maggie Tit's... <laughs> Sorry. You know... Maggie Tite's good friend, Begonia Riley, had fresh fish delivered to her window sill last week. We all joked about how a wolver must have visited her home. Even though Gran said she wanted the whole story, her frequent interruptions end up turning our story into her own. It seems Gran would be Gran even under the most unusual circumstances, bless her soul. Pardon? Fish? Jessie tenses in my grip. She looks a bit sheepish. That's what a wolver is known for, Malcolm. Caring for others in unconventional ways. I have to say that was probably Grace. Oh my, Grace is a wolver too. No, no, she's definitely not. Just more the fisher woman than I've ever been. I flash back re to reading Byron's description of the common wolver. It was in there, wasn't it? This detail about wolvers. Gran must have the whole book memorized. Is that why she is so excited? These fairy tales of her childhood finally proven true. Gran shifts on her seat as if preparing for many questions. What about Marion? Nor her. It's just me, Agnes. I'm the lone wolf, I guess you could say. Gran, I'm surprised you're taking this so well. I don't know whether to be shocked or proud. I'm both. There's a great legacy to be a part of, Jesse. Now tell me more. Don't skip a detail. Oh, I can't wait to tell Begonia. She won't believe it. I'm realizing, I'm realizing that, it is, that at this rate, Jesse won't need to reveal her secret identity. It will simply be brought up in casual conversation among the local gossip guild. Gran! <clears throat> Gran, you can't share this with anyone. You just said yourself that Jesse can't be seen. Please, respect her privacy. Oh, yes, yes, of course, I know. Just, but someday. Someday you'll share the news, won't you? For now, at least tell me. Tell me everything. And we do. With all of us curled up by the fireplace, it's like some odd re reversal of the story time we had as children. We sip our tea and nibble our biscuits, and Jesse tells the tale. She leaves out certain scandalous details, including our romantic excursions and the trauma of horrific injury. Gran nods, almost impatiently, as if waiting for the next part of the tale. It's wonderful, not just to have not just to have Jesse be seen and accepted, but to see Gran so filled with such genuine awe. After so many sleepless nights worrying about Jesse, her secret, and what it means for us, it's a reminder to step back and appreciate the hidden magic in this world for what it is. Let me see it right here, guys. Gran's revelation. Wait. Grand's revelation. I, I, I guess I mean Gran was revealing herself, or is there some other secret yet to be revealed? I love this game. From time to time, Gran punctuates the story with spontaneous outbursts. I can't believe it. You're so brave, and you never knew, you say, even as a child, that you possess such power, such magic. No, Agnes. It comes as quite a shock, but a bit of relief now. It's given me a renewed strength. Imagine that, Malcolm. Did you hear that? A woman as remarkable as this, with even more strength. Grand makes a tisking. Makes that sound that echoes more of disbelief than a disapproval. Then her face goes white, as if realizing something. The wolf! Bogair! They were all after you, the whole town! My dear, are you all right? I... I'm, I'm fine so far, Agnes. That's why she needs to keep this a secret. At least until we decide how to handle it. Well, you've nothing to fear in my book. Let them stare. Let them see the beauty and majesty of the Fae, right in front of their eyes. What a sight to behold. That's extremely kind of you, Agnes. Granted, it's not as simple as being confident. There's still danger. People aren't used to seeing wolf women around here. Not yet, but they had better get used to it. I do appreciate your enthusiasm, Miss Campbell. So who else knows about this? Your sisters, I presume? Bogair? I looked at Jesse to choose her answer. Grace, not Marion. Not yet. Bogair. No. Ach, they've been for quite a surprise. Grant. Should you choose to tell them, lass? Your secret is safe with me. You've done a fine job keeping it hidden thus far. Secrets don't usually last long in this village. Prying eyes, you see. Alana. Miss Alana knows. That odd bat. Whatever for? Unless she is a werewolf too. Grant, she's a schoolteacher. Nothing more. Malarkey! She's a witch! I think back to Alana's knowledge, her incantations. Gran may be more right than she knows, but best to limit tonight to only one revelation at a time, lest it be too much for, my poor, for her poor heart. 
Grant, stop. I will take her away. I will take away her tea and biscuits. <laughs> Alana saved my life. No matter what she may or may not be. Agnes, you asked who knew. I'm telling you, just two others beyond the walls of this room. Grace and Alana, as far as I know. <laughs> Grant sips from her cup and puts on a mischievous grin. Let me tell you some tales. The ones that kept me up at night as a wee lass. Jesse and I exchange a knowing look as we settle in for another round of grand stories. She pins yarns she spins yarns of werewolves and days of yore. And me uncle, he said they might steal the skeins of wool, but they'd return in the morn with fresh key, fresh knit mittens just for you. Fisherwoman and seamstresses, if I'm to live up to these tales, I've got a lot to learn. Nonsense, magnificent creatures all, performing good deeds and still lurking among the shadows, or in your case, among the stables of the stag and nanny. Grand winks. Aye, you every bit the part. You know, my great-grandfather once told me he spotted a wolf back in the days of Pony Prince Charlie, and here I am, smack dab in front of one. My, oh my! Eating your biscuits, no less. Oh, Agnes, I can't tell you what a relief it is to finally let another person know my secret. Especially someone so understanding. We're so fo we are fortunate this time. Jesse, you possess a supernatural power. It resents our world. If I were any younger, I'd have to be jealous of your beauty, your voice, and your tail. Just think of all you're capable of. Jessie puts her eyes on me, and I sense her wanting to tell my gran about how, may I, how I may be involved in all this. Let me save it right here, guys. I shake my head ever so softly back and forth. Please don't. Gran doesn't need any more gossip fodder. <laughs> I... Yes, well, I'm no master avenger. I can't deny it's special, though. Every sensation is heightened. Higher than I, than I can describe. I smell things so keenly and so far away. I hear differently. A pin drop startles me even. Each time my paws touch something, it's as if I'm feeling it for the first time. She steals a dimmer look my way. And you can simply change at will, from human to wolf. How very, very special indeed. Well, it's something like that. I tend to believe it's the energy of the er people around me that's keeping me from staying, well, from being a full wolf. Mm. Nonsense. You're a wolf. You're a werewolf. All the power is firmly rooted in you. Whether or not you can harness it has nothing to do with us foolish mortals. Dumb. Gran, you know she's not a mortal, don't you? Gran shrugs. We know nothing for certain, Malcolm. That's the history of the Fae in a nutshell. You don't have to see something to know it to be true. Gee, where have I heard that before? You think I have all the power I need inside me? Naturally. I guess... You could be right. I've always had someone by my side, leading me back into my human form. Maybe I don't need anyone. Oh, don't mishear me. Everyone needs someone. Kran looks pointedly at me. It's good to have help now and again, but the spirit you have, Jesse, it's yours alone. Embrace it. I do believe Gran my grandmother is inadvertently tempting my girlfriend into trying her hand at transforming without me, or anyone else around. I don't want to think about the consequences. I also don't dare tell Jesse what she can and can't do anymore. Love is confusing. Love mixed with transformation is something completely inexplicable. No, I don't picture myself at the pub talking women, talking women problems with my with Bogart anytime soon. Meanwhile, a look of hope spreads across Jesse's canine features. Agnes, if I'm able to control myself, I could live anywhere, right? Oh my dear, you're talking about the city, aren't you? Everyone knows how desperately I want out of here. Please, take no disrespect. This town just has little to offer a talented young woman. Something like that. Grant's look of sympathy turns to one of pity. You can't leave Agna Craig now, Jesse. Don't you see? You're meant to be here. You're one of the Fae, returned after so many years. She speaks with the conviction of a preacher. Can't or shouldn't. Absolutely can't. None of your ability to change will work outside the village. And is that a fact? It sounds like a grand fact to me, but I hold my tongue. Jesse does not. What are you saying? That can't be. It can't. I won't be bound here. I sense that this conversation is taking a turn for the worse. Let's try to calm the situation. Ah, oh, hell. Save it right here in case I pick a stupid conversation choice. Jesse, let's focus on the right now, remember? We decided to take this day by day. 
day by day. What then? Month by month by year by a by a month by month by year after year. Malcolm, this place isn't for me. It never will be. Stay calm, Jesse. Think about all you have now. I'm so sick and tired of people telling me to stay calm. Sick of being told what I should do. You especially, Malcolm. I thought you supported me. I did. I just tried to calm the situation down. Okay, let's uh, let's back up. All right. Uh, what's name? Okay. Grant, you know Act and Craig better than any of us, but, well, when it comes to the supernatural, don't you think Jesse is the expert? There we go. That's better. Oh, okay. And Alarm Shan is telling me to end it right there. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!